This is Spirit Spotlight. Bethune cuts in. Bethune now finds Rodman. Flag stays down. Rodman off the post and in. The first shot of the game produces the first goal of the game. And the Spirit go on top. Your official Washington Spirit source for exclusive interviews, official postgame show, and all things Spirit throughout the season. Here's Bram Weinstein. Let's welcome in Tara McKeown from the Washington Spirit on a week off of play as all of the national team festivities are happening in the world of soccer. Hey, Tara, how are you? I'm good. How are you? You know, like if there was ever a week where I don't think you guys needed a week off, it's definitely this one. You guys have been playing so well recently. So how is the team kind of handling this week with no match and a number of your teammates away on assignment? Yeah, I think we kind of went into this week with the deload mindset. We have been playing a lot of games and been playing well, but I think we're just trying to get our bodies right. So we're ready for next weekend. Okay. Um, and is this a bad week to have a week off the way you guys are playing? Do you, do you believe in momentum? How, how do you kind of feel about not playing this weekend? Uh, I think it's kind of nice, honestly, to have a break, be able to reset, reset the mind, reset the body. And yeah, just we'll cheer on our teammates that are away and then get ready to go play against Utah. I think everyone will come back with like fresh, clear minds and ready to compete again. Last couple of weeks, the team scored a combined seven goals in the first half. Um, What's been happening the last couple of weeks offensively for the spirit to get off to the starts that you've had? Yeah, we've been working on our starts a lot. I think, as you know, the beginning of the season, we may have given up a couple goals like in the first few minutes. And now going into the games, we really focus on the first 15 minutes, attacking them and playing in their half so that we are able to get chances and hopefully not concede any. Um, you are the only player for the team that's played every minute, every match um, this season. Is that a statistic or a characteristic of yours that's important to you to be on the field for every minute of every game? Yeah, I think it's great. I love playing. I think being a player who can consistently play on the field those minutes is great for me. I think it helps my confidence and then helps me just get in rhythm with the team and being able to lead from the back. So yeah, I like playing. I like playing the minutes and I want to keep playing. (laughs) Have they ever tried to pull you off and you had to argue your way to stay on? Or is this just kind of a known fact? We don't pull Tara off of the field. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, um, with the loading and stuff, maybe they'll have to start having those conversations, but I'll definitely fight to try and stay on the field. <laughs> um, let me go back um, a few years ago. You were drafted here and the team ended up winning a championship in your rookie year. Um, obviously, with the way the rookie class this year is playing and your standings, there, there seems that there's some similarities to that season. Um, could you go back to your rookie year and assimilating with the spirit and why it worked for you in your rookie year and why it worked for the team that year? I think that year we had to come together as a team a lot with all the stuff that was going on around us. So we really were able to bond on and off the field and just know that we had each other's backs and wanted to play for each other. And that's what ultimately got us to the final and then winning that game. Um, I think our team now has a lot of characteristics, the same that we want to play for each other, have each other's backs. So hopefully we're on the same trajectory. Obviously, the team made some trades and brought in these rookies who are having immediate and in the case of Croy Bethune, like profound impacts here on the early part of the season. Did you know early in camp or early in the season that it could be like this with this new group? Um, Yeah, for sure. I knew like preseason was so great with all the rookies. All of them were able to compete and play against the team that was here the previous year. And especially I knew Croy from USC. So I know that she has a competitive style and her coming in, she would just fit right in with the team. And I knew she would work to be on the field and then obviously um, produce for us on the field. What could you tell us about Croy from what you knew about her when she was playing collegiately? Uh, She's just a special player. She's great on the ball. She is able to find passes that sometimes you're like, Oh, that's like to no one. And then out of nowhere, Ule scores. Yeah. So <laughs> she has this vision about her that 
is way beyond her years. And yeah, I think she's just a great player, special on the ball. And yeah, very good with both feet as well. Um, obviously, you played for the same program, USC. Uh, mm-hmm. Why is that program so successful? Why is it producing so many great players in women's soccer right now? I think when we were there, it was definitely the coaching style. And I know that there's been coaching changes now, but I think it's a victory mindset when you go to a program like that and just wanting to produce for the for the city. And we knew going in like the standards and the standards were upheld when we were there. Um, you were a forward there. You were a forward for the spirit when you first came to the team. You've shifted positions. It's a change that occurred last year. And obviously you're excelling with the change. Um, can you kind of tell, take me through that transition period um, and how it kind of worked for you and how it's working now? Yeah, I think uh, I was definitely shocked when I first got the news that they wanted to try me at center back. And I wasn't sure if, I would be able to do as well as I was doing. But I think definitely last year with the confidence that they had in me back there, it helped me be able to have confidence in myself. And I think that's just growing this year. And now with the coaching change and the style of play they want to play, I think I'm just trying to get better each week and every game and just help our team win. Uh, it, it's interesting because you had a position change, then there was a coaching change and a style change. Were you convinced you would stay at the position you had switched to entering this year? Did you know you would stay at that position? Yeah, I knew. I think I kind of knew last year once they changed me back there and I did well that I would probably end up staying there for a long part of my career, if not maybe the rest of it. So I think now it's just trying to be the best center back I can be. Is it a fun position for you? You've seemed to have taken to it. It, it, It's a change. Do you enjoy the game the same way you used to? Yeah, definitely. I think in the beginning I was like kind of missing scoring and being up top and being like around the goals and goal celebrations. Maybe I'm a little late to them, but I think (laughs) me and Anna, when we're like running up to greet the team after we score, we're doing our own little celebrations. So I think we're definitely, well, I'm definitely having fun back there. I like being on the ball. I like leading from the back and just like starting the build up that hopefully leads to our goals. All right. Last thing for you. Um, Obviously it's been just a tremendous start for the team up to this point Uh, to continue this. What does the team need to do to continue its success? I think it's the same thing. Just go into every week with just one game ahead of us, trying to understand the game plan and the tactics that we need to win that game and not looking too far ahead you can always get caught up in like the standings and where you are and making the like um, the playoff, but that's a ways away. And we still have a lot of games that we just want to get better each week. Tara, thanks so much for the time. Uh, have a good weekend off and we look forward to seeing you against Utah next week. Thank you. All right. It's Tara McKeown. Uh You said Gabby Carl did a, a thing in French. Yeah, I guess she's, she yeah. did a, um, like a player's tribute. Uh-huh. Uh, it looks like R it's the name is RDS. It's from, it's in Canada. So I guess that would be, well, she's Canadian. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that, that would be the, but I was like, that's like their ESPN or what, like their okay. TSN type thing. Mm-hmm. And it was actually pretty interesting. It's a quick read. If you, if you want to check it out, Google translate does a pretty good job of translating it to English. And we talked about last week about how in the Seattle game, the first one of the season, they got scored on the first minute. That was final score, one nil. Then they played Bay FC, and Bay FC scored like 10 minutes into that one. Mm-hmm. And they were kind of, she basically says, after 10 minutes of play, they were losing again. And it was, wasn't was enough to silence all the doubts around the team. Because here it is, they're all young teams. They uh-huh. made these trades. They're all brand new. She literally writes, our anxiety creased as the minutes passed until the end of the first half. And then Hal Hirschfeld scored. And all of a sudden, it was a tie game. And she said, that's when the season started. Oh. When Hal Hirschfeld scored to tie that game up, that's when it was on. She said, this is the trigger we needed. And in the second half, that uncertainty seemed to have... That that started the season was gone. Oh. That basically, when they tied it up finally, they scored that first goal. That all of a sudden they played more confident. Um, it said they played the second half really tough, and they said from that they they got a victory when Croy Bethune then scored, and that kind of started her you know yeah. elevation to how she is now one of the best rookies ever that the league has ever seen. So she basically says. 
those first that first game, those first 10 minutes of the second game, wash. Don't even count them in the season. So it was a really good write-up from by her. Uh, tell Luke we'll talk to Gabby Carl next week for the show. <laughs> there you and, go. Uh, I've got a, a thread line to talk to her about for sure. There it won't go. happen in French, no, but I'll be glad sure. to talk to her. For sure. Uh, right. As I said, to uh, the U.S. women takes on South Korea tomorrow. That's at 5 mm-hmm. o'clock. So if you want to see all the Spirit players that are yep. playing, uh, you can watch that game tomorrow. Yep. Spirit off. They'll get Utah next week. This has been Spirit Spotlight, an official presentation of the Washington Spirit Radio Network. Listen live every Friday afternoon with Bram Weinstein at 340 on ESPN 630 in D.C. and anywhere from the ESPN 630 app.